We have seen the basic double slider mechanism where four links were connected using two fully rotating pin joints or revolute pairs and two sliders. And we also saw its application called the elliptical trammel. Now we are going to look at its inversion. So instead of fixing this link number one, we will be fixing link number two. Like this over here. Having fixed this link, on one side we will have a fully rotating pin, thereby creating a crank. And on the other side, we, because of this prismatic pair, we will have a slider. Interestingly, inside this slider, there is another sliding joint. So we are going to have another slider inside the first one. So we are going to have a slider inside a slider. Let us see how these links and pairs in our schematic diagram map into the physical mechanism. To start with, we have link number two, which is fixed. On it, we have a fully rotating pin B, which is here. This pin is holding the crank BC. So that's over here. So this is our crank. Attached to the crank is link number four. So that must be this green link. And link four is sliding within link one. So this blue link here, which is in a shape of a T, is link number one. And ultimately link one is sliding in a slot in the fixed link. That is this slot or guide. Let us see its motion. So if we drag on this crank, this is how it moves. Now you might have noticed that point C is tracing a circle and as it does so, the slot in which it is sliding is projecting its position and using it as the position of this T shaped link. Since we are taking a projection of a circular motion, on one of its diameters, the motion of this link, this slider, is going to be a simple harmonic motion, provided of course our crank is rotating uniformly. This mechanism is called a Scotch yoke mechanism. 